Since the start of the financial downturn, many young people trying to get into the construction industry, either through studying at university or college, are finding it a real difficulty. Many have said it's been the worst recession since the 80s, particularly for the construction industry. But thankfully, there is help at hand with organisations such as the Construction Youth Trust. My first question is to Christine, um, how the trust actually came about in the yeah. first place? Indeed, it's, it's our 50th birthday actually this year. We were set up uh, by the industry 50 years ago and initially we used to give money to young people's organisations like scout organisations for extensions to their building. So we were supporting young people through construction but not into jobs or in training in construction. And about 15 years ago, our trustees, who are senior figures from the industry, uh, decided that they wanted to do something more proactive about supporting young people into the sector. And we started off doing bursaries. So we would give about 15 to 20 bursaries a year to young people across the country with financial need who wanted support at craft or at professional level uh, to help them, to, uh, just give them a start into the sector. So Tony, tell me what benefits do you see from companies helping young people in this way and working alongside the trust? Providing structured development of an individual from a early, very early stage ensures that they will have the right mental approach to what is an extremely challenging environment. Um, organisations benefit in many ways, initially from individuals with trade skills, uh, industry knowledge and health and safety awareness, but from going forward with people with managerial potential uh, from the development of the core skills. We at Anglo Holt focus on the cultural awareness that our clients demand of both the graduate and the trade intake we, we take in each year. So really to both of you, how vital do you feel the trust is to the future of the industry and young people within the industry? Well from my point um, as an industry representative it's absolutely essential that we have in the trust um, an ability to um, sift through the individuals that are out there that are knocking at the door and to provide a base level of, of, of awareness of the industry and the training and then bring the industry into that process. It's absolutely essential for us that what we have is a, is a group of individuals that have been initially vetted and then presented to us. It's, it's, it's essential, it, otherwise the industry wouldn't get an introduction to these to school children in this way. What I think is really important for, for that we have seen as well is that construction companies are really committed to supporting young people uh, but sometimes don't have the time to actually do the outreach work into communities and we also know that clients often are now expecting their contractors to have a commitment to the local community so we in partnership with construction companies can do a great piece of work in supporting the community, supporting those young people and helping them across that transition from often what is quite a chaotic lifestyle back at home into the world of work and providing that sort of entry point and working with contractors to keep them there. Now I know we've spoken a lot about uh, young people who've come straight out of school mm -hmm. or are still in school but what about those who've come out of university and college they've studied for construction how's, how's the problem come about in the first place would either of you say with them not being able to find work at the moment is there anything in place uh, with construction youth on that side um, well, our, our Budding Bernoulles programme is about uh, um, exposing bright young people to the industry, but they haven't got into, the, into uh, university yet. Um, we have done a small amount of work supporting young people who have graduated and helping them get placements. But as the trust grows, I think it's a piece of work that we'd want to do more of, because I'm certain that they're in the communities where we're working. There are young people who have got quantity surveying or civil engineering degrees and just don't quite know the right people to find the right jobs. So I would like to work with Tony and other organisations to make a real difference, to make sure that we're not losing talent at that professional level too. From an industry point of view, it's very much a case of supply and demand. Um, we take in graduates, quantity surveyors, engineers, management trainees each year. But it's very much a case of how much work can we provide for them and how much can we actually give in, in time and, and we'll determine how many we can take in. And there's only a, in the current climate there's only a relatively small number unfortunately we could we can actually take in as a business and I feel that other industries parts of the industry are, um, are, are suffering from a similar um, restrictions. What do you think the solution could be? Greater demand, greater volume of work um, and it would enable us to provide greater opportunities for those, those individuals. 
I was just uh, just going to add to that that the um, the trust is very aware that there are some bright, very bright, talented young people who've strived to get into the industry and have done some great successes. And we've got a Young Achiever Scheme Award that we've launched this year uh, and will be happening in November. And I think that's our first sort of toe in the water of working with young professionals post graduation and celebrating their success. And I hope those awards actually highlight uh, to the industry and to, to the community at large that there are bright young people who have come into the sector through maybe maybe started as a carpenter and are now a, a project manager and how that the potential of the industry is, is great and that um, employers um, are working hard to support those young people and that if we work together we can actually enable that talent to get in and move on. Separately I spoke with David Bucknell of Ryder Levitt Bucknell and found out his opinion of Construction Youth Trust. Hello David, welcome to Construction Talk. Hello. Thank you for coming along. I think the first thing I want to ask you is what makes you want to support the Construction Youth Trust? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I've had a lot of years in the construction industry and I think it's a bit underrated. So anything that can, uh, I can do to, to make it more relevant, particularly to young people, is going to be very good. Uh, I think it's such a creative industry, so, so much more than it's ever given credit to. For goodness sake, it's 10% of GDP, and it's not necessarily seen as particularly attractive to a lot of people. So it's very, very important for me to do things to, to make it attractive to young people. I think if we move on and then talk about what I might call responsibility or responsible management, well, uh, anything we can do uh, to get people in on, on, on the less privileged side of our society into the industry, well, so much the better. We've got all ranges of skills in the industry. And in particular, I, I felt it was a, a worthy thing to try and make um, uh, people want to come in at one level, probably if they've had a tough time up to now, and know that they can go, frankly, right through from there. But if they just get a skill and stay in that skill, they have a very, very interesting life, a lot of teamwork, a lot of interactivity, should get a lot of work as well if they sort of adapt those skills. So combination of passion for the industry and responsibility and, and feeling a lot for society. I do a lot of work outside here in the less, in the more disadvantaged communities and I know the problems and I know the opportunities. So you see it as a win-win situation oh, really for, for the and industry? I, I think that's right, the win-win side mm. of it is very, very important. Um, and it's rather tougher. I mean, we've had a recession. We've got a recession. It's going to be a long one. Let's make it up and kid ourselves. So, and, and one of the things that often gets dropped off the agenda very early is training and recruitment, and it shouldn't because it's still the best value for money, and we really ought to be working on it. So uh, th those are real factors for my being involved in the trust. Now, I know you've touched on it just slightly there, but what do you think is the most important thing about working in this way with young people? Well, I think number one is the, the creator. I have often almost lambasted the industry for not being very creative, but I've just got a bit more hands-on on a project, and it's much more creative at any level. So there is that. There is the satisfaction. Anything, if you were any number of things, I'll put it another way. Everything we do is either driven on, lived in, worked in by, by we touch every part of the society. And you'd be surprised at the lowest level even a quantity of some would say, you feel it's your building when you go past it. So it's that feeling of belonging and achievement and creating something. And that's a very important thing. The challenge of making it work and doing it on site at whatever level, I did quite a few years as a, le no, quite a few months in fairness as a labourer. And you think that's a, that's a very ordinary job, quite creative. Even shoveling cement has got technique to it. Even making concrete in those days and mixtures and what have you. So from top to bottom, it's much more challenging creating creative than people realise. Now back to Christine and Tony for some more of their views. How does this all fit into the big society idea with the Construction Youth Trust and employers taking on people? Mm. And does, does it tie in? Is there... I, th I, I think, well it does, and I, I, one of the things that we've just been developing over the la recent months, and I think it's a new venture for the Trust to want to grow, is that uh, some contractor partners have come to us to ask if their staff can do volunteering, 
uh, for us. So we get several days of, of each young person, say 60 young people from one company, are doing their Duke of Edinburgh's, and to do their volunteering, they're doing it for us. So it's a key bit of what big society where they're bringing their skills into the programmes that we do and are sharing their experiences of how they got into the sector with those young people. So that they're doing volunteering that directly brings their skill sets into the community. And I think that's a real contributor to the big society agenda. Tony, what's your opinion on this? As an industry, sadly, we don't do enough. Um, if this is one way of doing it, then it's great. And I think if we can respond to the challenges set by the Construction Youth Trust and rise to those challenges, it helps us achieve and take part in the, uh, in the big society debate. And being here today is my contribution and other parts of our business do a similar, similar thing in terms of putting the message out there from an industry perspective. Tony and Christine, thank you ever so much for joining us here on Construction Talk today. Thank you. Thank you. So, as we can see, not enough in the past has been done to help young people within the construction industry or to get into the industry, but we can safely say with a trust like Construction Youth that things are looking far brighter for the future. This is Lindsay Rose Masura for Construction Talk. Construction Talk.